So let's take a listen to this tune. I think you're going to recognize it, most of you. Uh, it's, it's a Steely Dan classic called Bodhisattva, and right away you're going to realize, right, I think just from the tempo and the vibe of the whole thing, why it's a really appropriate vehicle to employ some of this showbiz flash idea. Basically a G7 kind of C7. It's a little like a blues, right? G7, but gets funny here. E flat, A7, D minor, B flat, E flat, F and G. Now, some jazzy substitutions. Still sort of a blues. But now this funny five chord area with some hits. little break and then second time through so let's take a look at the chords there's there's quite a lot going on in the, uh, the there's a there's like G and F chords uh, for the G and then there's uh, when it gets to the C it's C, C and B flat with some added notes but essentially for our for our purposes of soloing on it I I think of that as blues so uh, it's basically a G7 sound uh, for the first four bars, a C7 sound for two bars, and then G7 for two bars, just like a blues. Now, instead of the, d the expected five chord, of course, this is Steely Dan, so they're always throwing you a harmonic curve, and in Bodhisattva, uh, it goes to the E flat major seventh, to A7, to D minor seven, to B flat six, to E flat major seven, to F, maybe with a two, uh, uh, and then and then back to the G. Um, the second time through, we we get a little jazzy turnaround that uh, that Donald decided to add to our live version. Uh, so it's instead of just the G seven for two bars, we get the G, and then we get F sharp minor seven flat five, B B seven, E minor seven, E flat minor seven, D minor seven. G7, and then the, and then we're at the C, so just a kind of a circuitous route to the C chord, and then back to the G, and then again that same chord progression: E flat seven, A seven, D minor seven, B flat six, E flat major seven, F with a nine, and then the G, our G again, and there's a um, and that's where we get the the break, which is an opportunity for some flash. Uh, then uh, I think the rest of the chords are, are similar, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. So I have a little uh, anecdote I'd like to share. <laughs> I, uh, when I first started learning uh, this tune, I, I struggled with it in the very early years. But over the years, I, I grew pretty comfortable improvising on, on those oddball changes there. <laughs> Um, and then uh, one year at the beginning of a tour, we hadn't we hadn't played for several months. We got we got back out on the road, and we started playing this tune. And I could I, I was it was it was horrible. I, I felt like I couldn't play half of what I had been able to play on the song in prior years, and I was I was kind of pulling my hair out trying to figure out what's going on here. I, I, Am I getting old fast or something? I, I just was, it was a nightmare. And I think I must have been publicly venting this after a show one night backstage. And Keith Carlock, the drummer, uh, overheard me and said, oh, you know, this year I raised the tempo on that quite a bit. It's a lot faster than it used to be. <laughs> so I said, of course, I was, I was sort of half uh, relieved, but, but also sort of, Continue, continue to be frustrated because it was it was so so much faster that uh, that my approach wasn't going to work anymore. So again, I, I took my own advice and decided uh, to compose what I wished I could improvise because I couldn't make that tempo happen. And uh, and then when I was considering this song, uh, I realized okay, well this just the nature of this song is an opportunity here. If I'm going to script something to play, um, I want it to be. I wanted to include a, a decent element of 
of uh, Flash, kind of showbiz Flash, if I if I can, you know, to the best of my ability to come up with it. So uh, so check out the. Let's listen to uh, what I did come up with uh, uh, on this solo, and uh, and then we'll break it down later. <laughs> 